The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, State of Oregon, on your new apparatus, job number 29728. Please utilize this job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start at the front bumper area. Down in the lower section on the passenger side, you'll find an air horn. On the driver's side, you'll find an electronic siren. Moving up onto the body, on the left and right side, you'll find marker turn indicators. Moving just inside from that location, you'll find your light cluster. This is the headlight cluster housing on the outer section, the low beam, and on the inner section, the high beam. Moving up from that location to the next light cluster, we'll find your turn indicator on the right and left side. And then in the center, you'll find an emergency warning light. Moving up onto the windshield, your seamless windshield has three windshield wipers. Moving to the outer section of the mirrors, there's a two-section mirror, the top being flat and the bottom being convex. And we'll move to the very top of the brow. These are your running lights. There are five lights across the front. And at the very top, your emergency warning lights. And in the very center of your emergency warning lights, an opticom. Here are some close-ups of the area we just talked about. This is going to be the top of the apparatus with your warning lights. Looking down at the bumper area, we're identifying now that turn indicator, marker light, and also just beneath that, an emergency warning light side facing in the front. Moving up to the top of the apparatus in the center, you'll find your opticom. Here is a generalized view of the side of the apparatus, specifically the mirrors as we're looking at. Let's take a look at the top portion, grand view portion of your mirror, and at the very bottom, this is your convexed portion of the mirror. Here is the uh, close-up of the headlight cluster, in addition with the turn and warning light cluster. On the side of the apparatus, this is the marker or turn indicator. Looking down close near the bumper and step area, you'll find an additional warning light and also a reflector. Generalized close-up view of your electronic siren. Looking underneath the apparatus, you can see there is a right and left open-ended tow hook. Generalized view of the side of the apparatus. As you can see, all entry points have keyed locks, in addition with grab handles at all locations. Let's go ahead and take a look at the full side of the apparatus, but let's first start with the uh, left-hand side, driver side. This is going to be your shore inlet. This is a 50 amp inlet. It is not an auto eject, therefore it is a twist style to actually engage power. Looking at the driver's door, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, there is a seat belt information. This is the location you'll find also within the owner's manual regarding safety and warning labels. Down at the lower section of the step on the driver's side, you'll find a step light in addition with an air inlet. Underneath all points of entry for personnel, you'll find perimeter lighting. Your vehicle is equipped with Goodyear tires in addition with Alcoa wheels. Also located on your front axle is the Stemco visual indicator for your hub. Moving just to the rear section, you'll find once again at points of entry, warning labels regarding the use of seat belts. There is also reflective tape at each point of entry. In addition, within the rear section of your apparatus, there are these red straps for assisting yourself into the cab. We'll now move to the body of the apparatus. At the very top of the apparatus in the front, you'll find side facing floodlights. Moving down just beneath the slide, you'll find two access doors. Let's talk about what's in the components within those access doors. In the very front compartment, this will be the location of your 12 volt shore power charging system. Moving to the back section of these same compartments, 
you'll find your slide out reservoir in addition with the pump and manual controls. Also in this area is the exhaust for your apparatus and also a warning label regarding that exhaust. Let's go ahead and start looking at each of the individual components behind the roll-up compartment doors. In the first door you'll find two fixed adjustable shelves. All of the compartments have lumination and lighting with inside. Let's talk about the next section back which is going to be your SCBA bottle storage location. There are two locations for SCBA bottles. In addition, moving forward of that location, we'll find an additional compartment that has this emergency warning light. Behind that, you'll find your diesel and DEF fill. The silver cap is diesel, and the blue cap is your 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. Moving further back, you'll find a 120 VAC 20 amp outlet. Moving up to the section that houses this roll-up door, Inside, there are a few components that we'll talk about. Starting at the bottom, we'll talk about your generator. We'll also talk about the breaker panel and also your transfer switch. First, let's go ahead and start at the lower section. This is going to be a rollout compartment. Uh, this shelf, uh, when depressed by the black lever on the left and right side, will allow that shelf to pull completely outward. To restore that shelf back to its original position, there is a cable on the right hand side. Simply pull that cable which would allow it to release the mechanism and that shelf will roll back into its original position. Let's now start at the very top of the apparatus with your generator. The green light indicates that the power is actually on. Your generator is running. There are two fuses located in the uh, black housing and just beneath that are your generator hours. The four subsequent gauges down below indicate generator power. And as we move to the very right hand side, you'll find your breaker panel, which is labeled G1, stands for generator. Uh, the other portion here is going to be your uh, parallax power supply. That is your transfer switch regarding from shore power to RV or generator battery power. Let's go ahead and look now at the uh, side view of your apparatus and we'll break down some of the components within these compartments. As you can see, the rear slide-up door has uh, adjustable shelves in addition with a pull-out shelf at the very bottom. Once again, same mechanism with the black latches on the right and left. In addition, when it's in its full outright position or locked out in its position, to regain it back to storage position, simply pull the cable, release the mechanism, and allow it to store back. Just beneath this compartment, also the location of your two folding wheel chocks. And just above this location at the very top of the apparatus, you'll find a warning light in addition with a side facing floodlight and a marker light. As we move to the rear section of your apparatus, we'll go over some of the components here. Let's start down in the lower section of your apparatus just underneath. There are perimeter lighting in addition with uh, closed attachment points or hooks on the very bottom. Located at the rear of the apparatus, you'll find this warning label regarding writing on the back of the apparatus and the possible fall hazard associated with that. Moving down from the warning label, you'll find an exterior outlet. This is a 20 amp outlet. Moving just to the left of that outlet at the very bottom, you'll find an emergency warning light. Up from that location, you'll find your reverse or backup lights. Moving up from that location, this small light facing downward is a step light. And just up from that location, this will be your left and right turn indicator. And at the very top of this cluster, you'll find your brake lights. Just up from this location, you're going to find a step light switch. We'll talk a little bit about how to operate the ladder in the next set of images, but let's go ahead and start on the passenger side of the vehicle. We'll start in the upper left hand corner in the rear. In the upper left hand corner you'll find an emergency warning light in addition with a side facing floodlight. Also located on the side of the apparatus is your entry point door for gaining access inside. This is also a window that does open, it slides. Let's go ahead and talk about the components behind this roll-up compartment in the very rear of the apparatus. This compartment houses the same configuration as the driver's side rear compartment, adjustable shelves in fixed positions in addition with lighting. The difference is, is this side offers a cord reel. It is a 150 foot cord reel. 
it does have a reel reset, which is a breaker for that cord reel. And down at the lower section, this is your cord rewind switch. This is a 15 amp, 150 foot in length reel. This houses the same mechanism with all of the rollout shelves. Once again, it has the two black latches on the right and left and the cable on the right for retracting it back. Let's go ahead and move just forward of this location, just near the rear wheel. You'll find at the very bottom section an additional outlet. This is a 20 amp outlet in this location. Just up from this location you'll find an access door and also a warning light on that access door. Location behind this is going to be your bottle storage location. There are the potential for two bottles in this area. As we move forward of this location you'll find an additional access door with a similar, a similar configuration or layout with bottle storage in this location. Just beneath that access door, you'll find the side marker light, which is identical on the opposite side. This is a turn marker light. And let's move forward into the next compartment. Just above the rear wheel, you'll find behind this locking roll-up door, a through compartment also with a adjustable or pull-out shelf. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll find a 15 amp outlet. There are four plugs in this location. And as you see, the same shelf configuration with the black knobs on each side for latches to open and the cord to return it back to its original position. Let's go ahead and move forward of that. This is going to be a compartment with houses a variety of different items, a drawer on the very bottom, in addition with, at the very top, bottle storage locations. Uh, just poking out from the left side of the drawer, you'll find a latch which allows the mechanism to open the drawer. And then up from that, you can also find additional storage. This is the main entry point into the cabin or main section of your apparatus. When the door is activated, the steps will automatically deploy in the downward position. There is also step lighting for each one of the steps. As we move inside the cab, we'll take a general view around of the entire cab. But first, let's take a look just by the grab handle. You'll find once again that safety warning information. Moving just forward of the main cabin door, you'll find this roll-up door, which houses a fixed shelf, which is adjustable. There are also two roll-out compartments uh, in this lower section. There are also some contents here we'll talk about in the next set of images. First, let's take a look at the yellow latch on the left-hand side of the drawer. This will allow you to release the mechanism, allowing that drawer to move to the open position. Located just above these two shelves, uh, beneath the adjustable shelf, you'll find the controls for your night scan in addition with your cab lift. First, let's talk about the night scan. It's this yellow control box here. It is mounted on the side, but also can be pulled out with a cord uh, so you can easily access uh, visibility for that night scan. This is also the location of your cab lift. Just above that, you'll find a 15 amp outlet and also the control module for your wireless awning. Let's go ahead and move to the very front cab section of your apparatus. As we look in the passenger's uh, door and also in the rear door, you'll find this once again, a warning label regarding the use of seat belts. Let's take a look at the side of the apparatus. This is the location of your only awning. Uh, located in the front section of the awning is where you'll find your manual roll-up section here. As we move to the very rear of your apparatus, you'll find this safety device or fall protection at the rear of the apparatus. Once we're up inside, at the very top, you'll find the night scan in addition with your air conditioning unit. Let's go ahead and just take a look around here. You've got compartment storage on the very top, and on the very far right-hand side, you can see the vented compartment. In this vented compartment with the latches down at the bottom, this is the location of your onboard generator. Located on the side near the bottom of the generator, you'll find your on-off for fuel. Also located near the bottom, you'll find the oil drain. You'll also find a protected exhaust stack for the generator. And as a general view of the apparatus, you'll find compartment storage 
all of the compartments in this area at the very top of the apparatus have uh, lights with inside and they are also all weather sealed. Located in the compartment just over the rear of the passenger side, you'll find an access door for the 150 foot electrical power cord. Also in the front, you'll find your night scan and air conditioning unit with additional storage location and a fold down step and step lights. Let's go ahead and move to the rear of the apparatus and let's talk a little bit about the ladder for gaining access up to this area. First, the ladder is currently in its position, which is in the open position. Uh, to restore it back to its stowed position, lift the center rod, allowing the hinge to lift up and the ladder to retract to its original position. Once it's restored, go ahead and restore the latch. As you can see on the right hand side here, there is some protective uh, plastic here on that now. Let's go ahead and take a look at just inside the cab. Orientation will be somewhat difficult, but uh, as we move through the cab, we'll try and orientate you so that you understand where things are located. This is looking back at the door as you're looking outward. You can see on the uh, left hand side, there are two fold down steps. There is also a pocket here with a dry erase board marker. And there is also dry erase boards throughout the apparatus. You're now looking at the control or module center. Um, you can see this area has a whiteboard on the right hand side next to the adjustable seat. And this is the portion of the apparatus that is in its full extended or uh, outward position. Just above the operator door moving into the cab, you'll find a list of controls. Let's start on the far left hand side and we'll talk about some of those components here. First, starting on the left, you'll find your awning remote. And you'll also find next to that your awning control. You'll see the lights that illuminate indicating out or in. Moving just to the right of that, there are a set of rocker switches. Those switches control the cabinet lights, the rear scene lights, the driver side flood, and passenger side flood. There is also a location here for an indicator regarding your generator start and stop, which is in red. This is the control for your slide to move the slide in or to move the slide out. Just to the right of that location is your onboard air conditioning unit. This is the uh, control center for that. Moving to the right, you're going to find some information here regarding your generator operations and instructions for starting and stopping the generator. Just down at the uh, door level as you're moving in and out of the door, you'll find your ceiling light switch. As we move just outside of the cab, looking inside, you'll find uh, you have a two seat here. What I would like to point out is on one of the walls, you'll find a danger or hazard label regarding the use of seat belts while in uh, motion. As we move through the cab, I would like to point out that all of the shelves uh, are adjustable uh, and there's also either a shore power or uh, 12 volt power within the vicinity of each of those shelves. Here you're looking at the 12 volt DC barrel style uh, for battery power. In addition with a 15 amp plug next to it, there's also been installed a bank of five additional switches individually controlled uh, by that red switch. As we look uh, further through the compartments, uh, you'll also find there are a variety of different uh, dry erase boards which have the ability uh, in most of the compartments to write on. Uh, this compartment here is uh, got shelves on the inside and also the ability to utilize that dry erase board. As we look forward to the cab, you can see there's an adjustable shelf. Uh, to the left hand side here, you'll find uh, this bench seat, but you'll also find your emergency exit through this window. There are two latches on each side to gain egress out of this area. Also, this is a belted location. All belts are indicated in red, so they're easily visible for all personnel with inside the cab. You can see in this, there is a compartment storage with underneath in addition with a belted location signs uh, for danger on mostly every point of access. 
Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this desk area. At the very top, you can see there's compartment storage in addition with the ability to write on the exterior with that dry erase pencil. As we look down at the desk area, let's start in the upper left-hand corner here. You'll find two switches. First, a red light switch and also a clear light switch. Um, and next to it, you'll find shore power uh, 15 amp. There are also these candy cane style, which mean that there are spare wiring behind those panels in addition with a 12 volt. There is also an HDMI input in this location. Just to the opposite side, you'll find two fold down seats. And as we move forward, looking from the back to the front of the apparatus, you'll find these two command seats here. Overhead, you'll find heating and air conditioning controls in addition with storage cabinets on the right and left hand side. And on the uh, side of the door, you'll find fold down seats on the left and right side. Overhead, you'll find push on, push off red and white lights. And as we look into those compartments at the desk level, you'll find a pull out set of drawers here. Looking overhead on both the passenger and driver side, you'll find additional storage locations. There is also a large desk area here with some components just up on the front of the dash, first of them being the warning for guarding seat belts, and also your climate control is located here for this section of the cab. Gray is your heat defrost, red is going to be your heating, and the blue is your air conditioning area. There's also a 12 volt barrel style in addition with a 15 amp plug. The two storage compartments directly above have safety latches for those to maintain the contents with inside. And they also have on both the passenger and driver side uh, these cabinet light switches to illuminate the lights with inside. Located at the base or floor area, you'll find an access door. Uh, this is located in the center of the apparatus. This access door, once open, you'll find the ability to do your daily checks for oil and transmission checks. There is also a light with inside this compartment. Let's go ahead and take a look at the outside looking into this section of the compartment. You can see the two command seats here. Also, you can see the uh, desk in addition with overhead storage. Let's go ahead and move now to the operator seat. As we look at the operator seat down at the floorboard area, you'll find your accelerator and your brake. Located just left of the brake, you'll find this foot pedal, which is your air horn. And also, just to the right-hand side, you'll find two additional caution and warning labels. One is for the uh, diesel engine exhaust, and the next is for equipment damage and to make sure that you utilize your service manuals. On the right-hand side, the yellow placard, the vehicle has been manufactured for the state police uh, for the state of Oregon. It's indicating the date of manufacture, the job number associated with this vehicle, in addition with gross vehicle weight rating. And lower down beneath that, you're going to find the VIN number, which is also on the A-pillar driver's side, and also associated fluids, types, and the amounts for your apparatus. Starting at about knee height on the operator side, first you're going to find at the very top in silver, this is your quarter on off switch for the master battery. Moving to the right of that, you'll find your engine transmission diagnostic port in the green cap. Moving down from that, this is going to be your slide out master, ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and regen inhibit. Up onto the steering column, you'll find your right and left turn indicator. You'll also find your hazard lights and also the push and pull for telescoping uh, your steering column and also tilt. Let's go ahead and move to the left-hand side of your uh, dash. You'll find your ignition and also start switch. Let's go ahead and move just up from this location on this yellow placard. You'll find your height, 11 feet 10.5, length, 36.8 and your gross vehicle at 21 tons. Also in the yellow just beneath that you'll find the job number. Let's now move to the right hand side of the steering column. You'll find your driver side and passenger side mirror controls. And as we look uh, just directly in the center you'll find all of your gauges regarding uh, your vehicle for tachometer, speedometer 
in addition with oil pressure, transmission, DEF, fuel level, water, front and rear air, and your voltage. Let's move down about right, uh, correction, left side. Let's talk about the small button here labeled EM. That stands for Emergency Master. That controls all of your emergency master lights. Moving to the right of that, you'll find your on-off for your headlights, and to the right, the panel dim switch. On the right-hand side of the steering column, you'll find this OK to engage the high idle, and also just to the left of that, the high idle switch to engage high idle. Let's take a look here, a general view of the center console. We'll talk about the components here. Let's start at the very top. Uh, first component we'll talk about, this is going to be your siren control and also PA control at the very top. Moving down from the siren and PA control, you'll find a set of switches. Let's go over those switches. First, let's start with the rear scene and the driver's side flood, passenger side flood. You'll see there's a blank and also the generator start and stop in red. And on both sides of that, you'll find blanks. Those are for future switches if you choose to. Also on the right-hand side, this is going to be your windshield wiper control uh, for uh, the windshield wiper fluid. Uh, merely push in, which will allow the uh, motor to kick on and apply fluid to the front windshield. Let's look at the next set of switches. As we move down, you'll find your emergency master. You'll find your engine brake on off. You'll also find your engine brake low, medium, and high setting, mirror heat, your opticom, and also your load manager. Moving down from this location, you'll find your Allison transmission pad. And to the left of that, in the yellow, this is going to be your parking system brakes, pull to apply, and push to release your main brakes. Moving just up to the right hand side, this is going to be your climate control, the gray areas for your heat and defrost, the red areas for the cab heat, and also in the blue is your AC controls. Also note there is a caution label regarding disengaging the retarder when vehicle is on wet or slippery surfaces. Between the passenger and the driver's seat on the rear wall, you'll find a shore outlet uh, power location. There are five switched locations here. The red switch controls all five of those. This is when you're plugged into shore power. Let's go ahead and look from the passenger side. As we look inside the cab, I would like to point out once again the warning label here just above the door latch for the use of seat belts and also the reflective tape just below that. Looking overhead uh, inside the cab, you'll find on the passenger and on the driver's side a variety of different future locations for components to be installed in addition with push on and off red and white lights. Let's look down at the seat area here. Just in front of that, there is an access door for components behind that for service in addition with the fill location for your windshield wiper. Moving up onto the dash, you'll find two 12 volt outlets. The very top is a USB style, and the one below is the barrel style or cigarette lighter style. Just overhead in the very center of the cab, you'll find this red puck style uh, light. Uh, if this is illuminated, it's indicating that you have uh, a compartment door ajar or a compartment door open, and not to move the apparatus until verified. Once again, looking overhead, you'll see those components here. Directly in the center, difficult to see here, is your seatbelt information center. Red being someone is occupying the seat but not belted. Green, someone's in the seat but belted. And that's in between uh, the very center near the uh, red puck style uh, door open. Here's an image of the side of the apparatus. You can see with the uh, slide in its fully extended position. This is from the front section of the cab. Let's go ahead and take a look from the back section or rear of the cab with it once again fully extended. Here's an image of the passenger side with the canopy fully extended. Congratulations State of Oregon on your new hazardous materials response team vehicles. Job number 29728. If you have any questions as to the content of this video, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.